maybe do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about your studio and what you do there? Hey, Rebecca. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for having me, first and foremost. It's really lovely to be on the stream with you guys today. I've just been having a little read through the uh, the chat there, and I see somebody's uh, prepared by sitting there with their, their cranberry juice ready for us. So I think that's just <laughs> how, how appropriate you need to be uh, to be prepared for this. So as you've said, uh, I'm the head of talent here at Studio Gobo. We're based in Brighton, in East Sussex. In fact, I told the live straight away, we're based in Hove, actually, uh, in East Sussex, uh, right there next door to Hove train station, the uh, the iconic Dewberry Perfumery building, if anybody knows that. Um, we're just coming into our ninth year now. Um, next month is going to be our ninth, ninth birthday. We've hit 110 staff, perhaps. Uh, some of you might know of us because we have studio dogs as well. We're quite well known for that fact. Um, so I think we've got five or six studio dogs ordinarily, which, of course, we're all missing terribly uh, at the moment. So Studio Gobo is a co-development studio, uh, which means that we partner with large studios to work on their IPs with them. Um, good examples of that would be our first uh, project that we were working on, which was Disney Infinity playsets. Uh, if anybody's familiar with those playsets, we worked on the Guardians of the Galaxy. We worked on Star Wars. Um, we were working on Moana. And then, uh, unfortunately, Disney Infinity was no more. And just, just as we were halfway through that, I'm really, really proud of it. Um, since then, we've actually kind of, I don't want to say grown up, um, but kind of we've matured, let's say. So where we were working on the Disney stuff before, um, and it was all sort of colourful and, and uh, reds and whites, you know, as to what our identity might have seemed to look like. We've we've now gone into this sort of darker black. We're, we're our, our mood, in our moody teens now, <laughs> um, and we're working on the likes of kind of more recently. We've been working on For Honor with Ubisoft. Um, we were working on Hyperscape, which has just been released. It's a big battle royale game. Um, if you're not aware of that one, go and check it out. It's out there now. We've announced that we're also working with Tencent um, on a huge game called Synced Off Planet. Again, it's a brilliant game, um, a character action, zombie, PvP, PvP. Um, and there's, of course, with any game studio, there's going to be stuff that we're working on, but we're not allowed to really talk about right now. Um, so I'll just have to allude to one or two bits. Uh, one of the games that we've been working on for the last three years is um, a, a Warner Brothers multi-billion pound franchise that uh, all I can tell you about that is it's absolutely magical and uh, something else that's kind of super, super top secret. But again, just kind of keeping with that um, that, that console AAA character action vibe, really. Um yeah, I, I, the, the kind of the kind of people that we employ, the kind of roles um, that, that we that we have kind of within the studio um, is everything that kind of take makes up a development, a game, full game development studio. So everybody from myself in recruitment and then, of course, studio assistants and HR. Um, we have uh, uh, programmers, designers, technical artists, artists, environment artists, um, straight through to animators, designers producers, project managers, um, and I'm certain that I've probably missed one or two there, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of, uh, yeah, the, the kind of the plethora of, of mix of people um, that we that we employ within the studio. And that's us in a bit of a nutshell. No, that's really helpful. Thank you. I can see lots of <laughs> speculation in the chat as to what uh, what this game might be, but um, it's really interesting that you talk there about, you know, the, the wide variety of roles that you, you have, uh, particularly mm. as, as a AAA studio. And um, I was thinking about, you know, looking at, at our audience, I say, and, and we do have a lot of people who um, have transferable skills, maybe, maybe they're working as um, project managers and other types of roles. Do, do you have any advice for those who are particularly looking to move into sort of a, a AAA studio and, and how they might sort of go about um, bridging those gaps yeah I think you know I think that the main thing is a lot of people that work in the games industry um, they want to support other people to to break in you know um, uh, quite a lot of the time people approach me for advice um, and they approach me as somebody that's in recruitment um, talking about their discipline you've just used the example project managers um, my advice would be whilst the likes of myself um, and other recruiters I'm sure are more than happy to provide tips advice and, and support 
um, don't be afraid to reach out to who you would consider to be your peers within your discipline group um, and ask them what they think would work. You know, um, an example might be um, our producers, you know, if you if you speak with them, you would learn that um, they, they, they work in agile, you know, um, and they would probably point you in the direction of, of kind of maybe maybe good camps or, or areas of interest that you could learn more about. We've just uh, started to learn, I, I know my, our production team, excuse me, started, started to learn a lot more um, uh, about something called SAFE, um, the acronym S-A-F and then small e. Um, and yeah, I, to be honest with you, as somebody that's not a producer, a lot of that goes over my head, but you know, to, to reach out to those people, learn about that. Um, I believe that SAFE is the sort of course that you could you could actually take online, perhaps, you know, in, in your own sort of time. Um, I, I think that being persistent in that respect um, would really, really pay off for somebody because there's so many people with these transferable skills, you know. Um, I speak to artists, I speak to programmers, uh, uh, animators, VFX artists, people that have worked in TV and film or digital media, for example, and they have all of the core components, um, but they haven't actually produced anything that you could kind of consider to be game ready, if you know what I mean, or, or just mm -hmm. gameable. Um, right now, we're in a really boring period of our lives, right? Where I think that you can really use that time to your benefit. Um, if you are an artist, then then you know try to try to learn some three D art. Or try to to build out your profile, your portfolio. Um, ditto uh, everybody along all the disciplines where you have work that you can showcase. Please use this time to to build something that you can showcase that you would be proud of. If you're not too sure if you. If you should be proud of it, as I say, feel free to reach out to somebody on LinkedIn um, and say to them, hey, I wonder if you have the time to just check out this work of mine. Because I work with 250 colleagues overall between the studios that I represent. Um, and I, I promise you that 99% of them would give you the time of day if you reached out to them. That's brilliant. And I, and I think that's, uh, we, we talk about this a lot that, you know, I think people feel anxious about that reaching out. But, you know, what I hear time and time again from game studios is what you really value is passion and enthusiasm. And so if you if you sort of got that drive to reach out and, you know, we appreciate that that can be really daunting. And uh, we'll make sure that we share some videos around sort of how to build your brand and your confidence around some of these things that, that Vital Six has done previously. But um, yeah, I think that's that's a really good point about sort of building out your portfolio. Are there platforms that you would that you sort of particularly would um, recommend that people use for their portfolios or uh, ArtStation ordinarily um, for artists, um, GitHub if you're an engineer, you know. Um, so just to add on to, to something that I mentioned there as well, um, not only to reach out, but actually to be persistent too. Um, I think that, of course, you know, not, uh, only 50 percent of the UK games industry is from the UK. Um, but everybody in the games industry tends to be very British um, and very polite about things. and They don't want to don't want to bother people. But, um, yeah, be persistent. I think also, you know, if you've reached out to someone, if you've sent them your CV, your cover letter, your work and everything like that, don't be afraid to tap them up in a week's time. Um, and say, hey, I, I wonder if you've got an ETA um, on, on checking out that work that I sent to you. Um, because yes, it is a competitive industry um, and maybe that recruiter um, or that person, um, you know, received 200 applications for that particular role. But mm -hmm. if you're the, the person or, or one of a handful of people that followed up on that, um, you instantly stand out in a good way, not in a bothersome way. You mm -hmm. know? So I think that, yeah, I think that being fairly persistent really does genuinely help to, to stand out from the competition at the moment. And I can see a few questions coming in from people who are maybe less on the transferable skills side, but maybe taking yeah. that first step at all. Would that would that advice go for someone if they were straight out of university as well? Yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, what we're seeing now is a lot more, a lot, a lot more uh, kind of games game ready qualifications um outside of your typical computer science you know uh, degrees and and whatnot if you're if you're currently on a computer science course then that's amazing um that still is king don't get me wrong um but it's not the only thing that you can do i don't want people to panic if they're not on that path you know um we started recently we started working with a, a, a group called code coven 
um, who create online boot camps for marginalized genders within the games industry. And, and you know, you, you do a kind of a, I believe it's an eight week online course um, and you come out of a, a, a games industry scholarship at the end of it. Um, and I think that stuff like that is really useful now. You know, the, the platform in the games industry is amazing. Um, if anybody would like to know more about that sort of stuff, then feel free. I'm sure that my details are going to be available. Um, feel free to reach out to me about that. And uh, I'll be happy to, to talk about kind of more specifics, you know, with, within people's disciplines and what they can be doing. Thank you. Yeah, I know um, we've spoken quite a lot about Code Coven and we, we'll make sure that we send out um, links to that afterwards, because I think, you know, when I speak with you guys, we talk about that importance of diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. in the game sector. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I say that aware that I'm on a on a, an event with, you know, myself and, and a group of white men <laughs> and <Right. laughs> it's reflective of, of one of the issues that the sector has at the moment. But I know a lot of the studios are doing work to try and address this. Um, so I know that there's um, Code Coffin. Do you want to mention sort of developing minds a little bit as well? Yeah, thank you. So um, as I mentioned, you know, I, I work for Studio Gobo. Um, we have a sister studio called Electric Square, also based in Brighton um, and other studios globally, Limited Spa, Singapore. Um, and because we're sibling studios, we often kind of collaborate together, um, particularly when it comes to... Uh, doing things like initiatives, you know, creating in initiatives that, are, that will support those outside of, of the games industry. So we decided to create something that was more formal and we, we called it Developing Minds. Um, it's a, a 25 person voluntary team um, of people that together we want to, to, to help people outside of the games industry. Um, that doesn't just mean um, uh, uh, young people. It does mean young people, but it doesn't. It's not limited to that. You know, people that are maybe uh, a little older in, in their careers and they want to break in. We want to be able to, well, in, a, in the most diverse and inclusive way, we want to be providing this sort of guidance and, and support to absolutely anybody. Um, so that goes, as I say, from from primary school age to inviting primary school students into our studio um, and kind of letting them know that this can be a career, despite what your parents say. Um, and then all the way up through to, to people that are maybe yeah a, a bit further on in their career. The first thing that we did as a program um, under the umbrella of Developing Mind most recently was we worked with BAME in Games to create or rather build an online matchmaking platform um, to support uh, uh, BAME representatives, you know, in, into breaking into the, the the games industry. We talk about diversity, as you mentioned, Rebecca. You know, um, th this doesn't seem to be too diverse a bunch now but there's there's a lot of work being done in the industry right now to, to make sure that that changes um over the course of time and hopefully you know in a couple of years time you won't be desperate enough to have the likes of me on something like this you know um, but we've been working with Baming Games and we've created this brilliant platform um only 10 percent of the UK games industry identify it as Bame at the moment um, and we know that there's a lot more people that would love to be in the industry and um and so we've, we've set up um, 30, I believe, so far mentors, experts within their fields that are working in the games industry today that you could get match made with them um, and you can lean on them for support, advice, um, tips, knowledge. You know, what should I be doing? Is this good? Is this rubbish? Where should I be looking? Um, and you're going to hear all of, the, all of the information you need firsthand. So, yeah, that's really exciting. Thank you. And I can see that Hannah's posted a lot of links to sort of those programs and, and to the, the Twitter account. Um, sure. Also, I think um, Bayman Games actually have got an event tonight as well. So we'll make sure that people um, are sent a link to that if anyone would like to um, to attend to attend that. Um, we've probably only got a couple of minutes left. Um, I've tried to sort of pull out some um, some questions as we've gone along, but I just can't let you go, Guy, without just asking a little bit more about these studio dogs. Um, I know that, uh, you okay. know, workplace is really important um, yeah. at Studio Gobo. Um, did you guys win an award recently around that? What, and what yeah. about the dogs? Was it <laughs> it's based on the dogs. <laughs> no, uh, we, we did win our fourth, fourth in a row, um, I believe, uh, Best Places to Work Award. Um, yeah, so I, I, I should mention that we're a part of a list called the Best Places to Work. We didn't win an award called the best place to work. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, we're really, really proud of that. And I think that the studio dogs do go a long way to uh, to, to help in, you know, with that, that general studio satisfaction. Um, I mean, the studio is great. It just kind of, 
as you can see, we, we do work on brilliant, brilliant games, um, massive IP, and we live in a wonderful city. And, you know, there's all of this stuff, but it's also a studio that you really believe that they care for you. You know, um, like during lockdown, we've been sent Friday lunch. Every single Friday, we get sent lunch from a different place, um, which is brilliant. We get um, beers sent to us. We get cocktails sent to us. Um, we get fruit and veg boxes once every two weeks, a big box of fruit and veg sent to us. Um, so, yeah, yeah, they're awesome. And, and we, we recently uh, won awards just based on all of the wonderful things that the company does for us. Spoil. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds it. I would definitely, uh, I would definitely take a studio dog. That would, uh, that would be a big. Are you going to take them? Well, yeah, I guess I could <laughs> have it, but. <laughs> I'd like to do it say. <laughs> Thank you so much, Guy. I really appreciate it. And um, if you're having, you. we're going to have a few more questions at the end. So um, yeah, of course. questions coming in, and um, and we'll cover as many as we can. So thank you to Guy. Um, I really appreciate yeah. your time. Um,